So it turns out we have a pretty nice day here today in the uh, beginning of March. It's uh, in the low to mid 50s um, and I actually have some backhoe work that I need to do with the tractor. Um, I've already taken the snow blower off. I really hope I don't have to put it back on. Um, it is, again, only the beginning of March. I know we have a whole other month, maybe a month and a half here in upstate New York. We could get some snow, but hopefully not. Or at least anything major that I need to put the snow blower on for. So i got to put the backhoe on, as you see over here. Um, in order to do that, I'm going to have to drop my um, heavy hitch off. I'm going to have to drop the quick connect, um, the image quick connect. I'm going to have to drop the three-point arms off. And then I'm going to have to go over here and line the backhoe up, which is pretty standard. Anybody who has a backhoe is going to have to do the same thing. The thing that's new for me is I got this original tractor cab this, um, this winter. So, and I was just looking at it, and basically this bracket that sits here is pretty much right at the back. And that sits on this, I don't know if you can see that in the camera angle or not, but that sits kind of right on this angle um, up on the seat when it folds down. So it's going to fold down, it's going to sit here. So you have to have the seat flip forward. So the seat, the seat's gonna definitely hit this. Seat is definitely gonna hit the back window of the cab. So I'm gonna try to just take this back window out. I think I can do the rest. I don't think I'm gonna hit my head up here. So in order to drop this heavy hitch um, cart off, I got a, or heavy hitch weight bracket. Off. I have a bracket here. It's a homemade bracket I made. Um, it, it works pretty well, actually. I, I'm surprised at how well. It wasn't hardly any money. Um, I know heavy hitch sells one slides right into the two inch receiver, it comes down, um, it's really nice. I do like to make a lot of stuff, um, so I thought I would try my hand at this, and I've had good luck with it so far. I don't take this on and off a ton, and I don't move it around a ton, um, which is why I, I decided I'd go ahead and make my own. Now you will, I don't know if you can see it in this picture, but you'll see me moving it around. I did opt for the cart from B Expanded for the 260B backhoe. That one I got looking at, I looked at getting some of these dollies like they have, a, Harbor Freight, which is where I got this one from. And I know they have some bigger dollies and I've seen people make them and they work okay. But I have a lot of uneven ground. You can see the cracks in the floor. I got some holes where I pulled posts out here and it gets caught up really easy. And this backhoe is so heavy. It weighs, I believe it weighs over 600 pounds. That I really wanted something that I knew was gonna be stable. I knew it was gonna move around easy and I wasn't gonna have a problem pushing in on myself. So that's why I opted to buy the stand, but I did make the one for here, so. But anyways, we're gonna drop this off real quick. Pull these up. Get this lined up. So basically I made these two by fours, are, they come up here and they hit the bottom of these weights. They just take a little bit of weight off and then this bracket fits right down in between them. So it works fairly well. Um, I'm pretty happy with it so far. Like I said, I don't move it around a ton. I had another video about making this if you're interested in doing something like that yourself. Um, but, alright, so we'll drop that bad boy off there, you can kind of pull out of it. Alright, easy peasy. Alright, um, so my dealer had put these pins in here and then they put, um, counter pins in that fold in and drop it in. I didn't like that, I had some old, uh, three point pins actually put in so I could take it off. The way they had it set up, I couldn't really disconnect it, so I was having to take the quick hitch off along the three-point arms and trying to hold it all up to line it back up. And while doable, it was pretty heavy. So I just use these old three-point arms. I haven't hit my shin on this yet, so that's why it's still on there. All right, set that down. Turn off up here. And the nice thing is now I can take this by itself, slide it out of the way. Now that that's off, I only have the three point arms to deal with and that makes it just a lot lighter, a lot easier to deal with. So now the three point arms are off, you can see we got all the room. The backhoe can be coming and hooked right up. We got our power beyond there, we're gonna have to connect in, but we gotta, we gotta take this Lexan um, back windshield, back whatever you wanna call it, off of the original tractor cabin. It's, it's a pretty easy process. Um, there's a couple of uh, hooking velcro strips on the inside. 
just going to take them off. Okay. Down here, that connects it from the back to the side. So there's, a, there's another bracket that goes along the side. It's just a, a brace down in here that you got to take the Velcro off of. So down here, we're going to have the same thing. Open this door. This is one of the things I really looked at when I looked at the original tractor cab because I really wanted to be able to leave it, at least the frame of it on in the spring and summer, um, right through fall. You know, I didn't really want to take it off. And mainly because I wanted the canopy. Um, I know they sell other canopies, but I figured if I'm already buying the cab, um, if, I can get, if I can get a canopy that's gonna work, and I don't have to buy an extra canopy, why not use the one I already bought? So, all right, that's it. Now up on the top there is these little Basically pipe insulation that goes in. Basically just some wedging, keeps a little bit of air flow, stops air coming on there. So. Yes. Yep, so these sides are gonna have to come off. Couldn't remember. First time taking it back off. I only put it on this winter, so. But these all come off. Got caught in the bracket there. Just got it pinched in between. So it's gonna release that side. Do the same thing on this. Again, it's just these, you can see the bracket on this side right here. Hopefully you can see the bracket right here. But I just pulled this off, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Fold that and then fold it again where this plastic goes or the leather leatherette stuff goes across there. Um, so you don't really want to crease the windshield, you don't want to fold the windshield, but you can pretty much fold it in on itself with this leather material, vinyl stuff, um, so that it's um, good and folded. Set that. Set that out of the way. Now you can see we got the whole, it's, you know, everything set up. We can do this. This is just an extra piece of material they gave me. Um, it doesn't attach to anything, but when you hook it up, there's kind of an open gap that goes down to the three-point arms, and it worked out perfect to lay it in here. So I don't know if this comes, if they purposefully do that, but basically it worked really good when I installed it where I could just really lay it down in here, and it just kept a little bit of draft from coming up inside. All right, you will see I do have a wire here. Um, in I kind of I wanted to take this and I got to get some more zip strips and get this attached a little bit better. Um, this is actually for the windshield. So normally with a windshield you would want to run the power all the way up to your um, fuse block or all the way up to the battery with the inline fuse. Um, it does have an inline fuse. So I, however, had an adapter I could put back here for my. Um, it's not TKB20. TKB20 is the actual name from the company who makes it, but. It's a John Deere MCS 20. It's a 20 bushel material collection system. Um, I don't know if you can see it here, I'll move you over. You can kind of see it right there on the back side of the uh, back side of the backhoe. But the way it works on the John Deere version is that you have a, a connector. Basically, the connector comes up. There's no power other than for a, a powered ram to open the back up and then close it. So this is the power connector right here. I happen to be ran back from the battery already. So I just hooked into that for my wiper thinking I'm not gonna be using the windshield and the grass catcher at the same time because that won't be till summer. And by that time, I'm gonna have the windshield out. So, but anyways, that's it. Um, pretty much, you know, this is in here. You can see, you got a couple brackets here to deal with that kind of clamp in, but I don't think they're really overly gonna be in my way to be able to use this original tractor cab roof all winter long. Um, it, you know, like I said, it does, you can see up here where the, um, the ROPS folds up into it and it has a cutout, but you can actually fold this down. Once you get this cab in place, all these brackets are connected to the ROPS here. Then you have the other one that goes down and connects in um, to here. These are pretty stout. Um, these arms actually move a little bit. I have them tightened down fairly tight, but they're just to keep the uh, material from coming in. But other than that, I think I'm gonna be able to leave this cab on, um, this 
canopy on, excuse me, all summer without worrying about it, get a little bit of shade and not have to have the extra expense of going out and buying a separate canopy away from the original tractor cab. All right, so now that we have that on, <clears throat> we're gonna go here and hook our, hook our uh, backhoe up, oops, hook our backhoe up. So this cart does work well, if I remember which side to push it from. <laughs> so this is the first time actually hooking it back up on this cart. So you have to excuse any, uh, excuse any hard times I may have here. I'm trying to line it up a little bit. It was very easy, I will say, to take it off and drop it on. I was very happy with that aspect of it. So now that we have everything in here, um, you can see I'm gonna disconnect my bypass here for my power beyond. Like any other quick connect, you're gonna get some hydraulic oil out of it every time you disconnect. <clears throat> so I always keep a rag there. With the tractor, disconnect this one. Now you don't want to get too much out. Like I had a problem actually. One of my uh, when I had my when I had my tractor, uh, my front loader. Excuse me. When I had that hooked up, I was actually having a bigger problem with that where um, it was leaking, leaking. Like every time I would come back and put it on, there'd be a puddle of oil on the ground, and that's because I actually had a bad connector right here, and this was not sealing properly, so it was letting oil leak out of it. So you do definitely want to watch for that. All right, it's been a while since I hooked this up here. Oop, come on. There we go. These are a little bit bigger connectors than you're going to see on your uh, than you're going to see on the uh, on the front end loader. So they go in a little bit harder, but not too bad. They still snap in fairly easily. There we go. All right, so now once we start her up, I got my inside pins lined up. They're gonna catch on the bottom subframe. And I should be able to push up on the boom and it should rock it right back in place. You always wanna to watch to make sure you're not gonna have anything catch on your, uh, on these hoses when you get it back in there because you wanna reline them after you have the backhoe attached. But just be careful of them while you're putting it in place. So I haven't started this thing up yet today. We'll see how she should start pretty easily. Already got it neutral. So now that we have the backhoe on, you can see I'm gonna actually gonna pull my door off, and it's pretty easy. It has this. Bra I grab this bracket. It's the easiest way for me to do it, and you just kind of lift up. Um, that comes out on the top, and then there's a hook and loop, and that just the whole door pops off. Like I said, my biggest issue was seeing whether this was gonna work with the backhoe on the tractor. I couldn't find any videos out there with anybody showing that. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to make this video. You saw me putting it on. Again, there's a lot of videos out there with dropping the, uh, you know, putting the backhoe on and off the tractor, but I really do love that uh, B expanded cart. If you have a 260B, they make it for other ones, I believe, but if you have a 260B, definitely look into it. It's not the cheapest thing. I think it's a little less than 200 bucks, $180 maybe. Um, this thing is big and heavy, and I really wanted something sturdy that I could slide it in underneath. You can see I got the pallet racking in here behind me. I wanna be able to slide it in one of those slots when I'm not using it. So. 260B backhoe. Works great with the original tractor cab on this 1025R. Very happy with it, very glad I did everything. Hopefully this helps you if you had that same question. If it is, give me a like down below. 
If you have any comments, questions, let me know down below as well. Hope everyone has a good day. God bless.